Thank you. Very good morning to all. And uh, thank you for being part of this special session to have on uh, you know how to manage the mental health at workplace. You know, I'm Kamal Chawla, and it's an honor uh, for me to to be moderating this session. And this topic is actually very close to my heart because I'm also going through tough times, and I've actually taken a pause break, cognizant uh, of the fact that my my life, uh, my mental and physical life is very important for me. So with that, I to commence. Uh, and the topic today, um, we're not going to talk about policies and processes. We're going to talk about making a culture which is uh, respectful, which is which gives uh, uh, you know employees, you know everybody to to nurture, to collaborate, to you know establish those relationships which actually matter. Uh, you know, create an environment where everybody can thrive. We have a lovely panel. Uh, uh, Please welcome Siddharth Gupta, uh, India Talent Acquisition Leader, Leader Amazon, Sushmita Kare, Head HR Light Bite Food Private Limited, Saurav Sina, Head HR Live Pure Private Limited, and Ruchika Agar, she is head heading HR for Sharp Business Systems, India Private Limited. So without uh, taking much time, I will start with a fundamental question um, and I will start with that. So Dali, if you can brief us as to um, how do you see um, you know, the status of the mental health and well-being into our organization at our workplace and what we can do as an organization or a workplace proactively to take care of the, uh, this aspect and promote the awareness around this. Thanks, Kamal. Uh, thanks for having me here, first of all. Uh, so I will start with some of the numbers uh, just to share the gravity of the situation. 15% uh, of the aged workforce is suffering with uh, mental health issues. Uh, about 12 billion days annually, uh, you know, globally we are losing in uh, issues related to anxiety and stress. And these, these things have aggravated and increased by 25% post-COVID. I, th I think everybody knows that, you know. Uh, so that, that itself shows that uh, this is a very important aspect for every individual, uh, not only for HR. Uh, and, you know, uh, mental health is nothing but it's just like any other illness, you know. You have to take some proactive measures rather than being preventive, rather than going ahead and taking the active measures. Uh, it starts right with, uh, and I will take some live examples what we are doing at Amazon and uh, yeah, in previous organizations. Uh, I think it starts right with uh, trainings. Whenever any manager joins, uh, he should have a very strong training program. Uh, we have a two months of a training program, which includes trainings related to mental health, how to manage teams, and it goes with the promotions as well, which is mandatory for everybody. Uh, the same goes for individuals as well, where they they go through lots of trainings, how to manage mental health at workplace. Uh, of course, uh, most of the companies have those psychology like, sessions and those counseling sessions going on. We have some of those which are uh, which we call anonymous sessions where you can go and anonymously consult the uh, counselors, the psychologists. Uh, that is there and I think HR again plays a very important role where we have lots of employee engagement uh, events uh, and these events are not like, you know, just to have those events like Diwali and Christmas and all that. Of course, these are thought through processes by understanding what is happening in the organization and what is the need of the organization. Uh, it starts from there, uh, and then I would like to share one of the one of the very important mechanisms we call at Amazon and uh, that helped us in becoming uh, best places to work last year. And of course, being some of the best uh, in the industry, I don't want to name, but I think that is very close to my heart. Uh, we call it connections mechanism. So basically, you know, uh, we have identified some of those issues what exist in the organization and which leads to uh, the mental health for our employees, like job satisfaction, manager satisfaction, inclusivity, you know, openness, all of those things. The questions which are uh, put under those buckets. Now, whenever anybody uh, opens the laptop, this is the first question which pops up every day. Right, and it's mandatory for the employee to answer that question. Of course, you can set the timings throughout the year, uh, throughout the day whenever you want to do that. But you know, you have to answer that question. Now, uh, that that report that keeps on happening throughout the year, 365 days, 
and again every every day you get a question related to a particular theme. Now at the end of the month, the, the manager gets the complete report and that shows that how is his team doing in that particular theme. Of course these uh, responses are anonymous, so he will not be able to see which team member has rated what and how I am running you know, in, in what theme. But it gives a fair bit of idea like I am not doing good in, uh, in inclusivity in my team for example, right? And it also gives a comparison vis-a-vis -vis other managers uh, across uh, the organization that I am doing. What is my percentile there? So that also gives me a fair bit of idea, you, you know, whether it's an organizational problem or it's my problem as a line manager. So uh, once that is done, uh, the report goes to the manager's manager as well and to the HR as well. The HR, I mean the business partner as well. Now there's certain interventions which these people have to take, uh, looking at, you know, if some manager is not doing good in inclusivity. Of course, we have all those pre defined trainings, uh, uh, that's the beautiful trainings which are already there, but I think there are certain interventions which are required on a day-to-day -day basis. So that comes into picture and then that manager has to work upon it, there's a work plan which goes about on the theme. So I think that is one thing which I found very different uh, at Amazon and like my previous companies uh, where the focus was not so much on human aspect and this is unbelievably part of uh, the KPI of the managers as well. So it's not something good to have but it's must to have. You have to manage your <coughs> correction scores. So I think that was one thing which I wanted to share uh, apart from other things and uh, I think along with that uh, uh, mental health is a big problem with uh, working women as well, especially uh, who are managing uh, both, uh, you know, uh, house and then your work. I think that is one thing. As you grow in your ladder, that becomes uh, that problem becomes more aggravating. So, I think there are lots of things which which we have done uh, to manage that, uh, and it's 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 something you know. Uh, it starts right from somebody, it's not only about, about mothers and all, but somebody is coming back to office or returning, from, uh, returning to work after taking a break and all. So we have those uh, deliberate, uh, you know, we, have, we downgrade the productivity for certain couple of months once, uh, you know, somebody joins back from a break. We have those counseling sessions, managers, uh, there's ambassador which is allocated to uh, that employee once she goes on a maternity leave. Uh, lots of things which we do to make that comfort uh, to the employee once he or she joins in. You know, because this is a very major problem uh, which, which happens as you grow, uh, you know, with the years of experience, especially with female employees. So I think these are some of the real time aspects which I wanted to share. So these two bits from my way. Great examples. I think we resonate pretty well with the audience and me also. Uh, anybody else want to share any experience, any example that you want to give? Uh, with respect to how you are managing this mental health piece at your workplace. Yeah, I think Siddharth uh, has covered a lot of things. Um, I have seen the surveys which has happened, Deloitte making the survey on uh, mental health and many other uh, surveys which I go through the Google and try to find out as to what are the ways that we handle people. Uh, there are very few surveys which has been done on an Indian system on in Indian uh, environment where we have Indian companies and most of the employees who are there, especially I would talk about my own company, I am Lightbite Foods, we are in chain of restaurants, who do I deal with most of the time are the commies, the chefs, Uttarakhand say I am to work, what do know, they know about mental health, they must be going through, are they aware of all these things? How are they dealing with their time? Zen, why and Zen and millennials uh, uh, actually uh, make 75% to 80% of my workforce at Lightweight Foods who are working hard in front of the range, the cooking range and is very, very physically laborious. What is the mental health that we can take care of there? So I was going through a lot of Google um, surveys and all but what I have found out is this Gen Y and Millennials have come with a purpose and now how do I uh, you know, help them out, how do we help them out. So that's where I said you, know, you have to make a conducive environment for them to work. What is it they are very scared of, what is the stress and anxiety they have, what is the future, where are they going, what is the, how are they going to deal with the cost of living and is my job secured. Is, am I learning? 
am, how am I being dealt with my friend, my bosses? So I always tell my business line managers to be very aware of them. Practically, you have to create that environment, the culture for them to work. We have a lot of multinational companies who outsource the, exec, the you know, employee assistance programs. But what about your own home, which is for them, it is the second home for them. Gen Y and millennials, they have high stress. They know how to go to a gym, have a physical diet for them to remain fit health-wise. Do they have emotional diet? Do they know what to read, what to take in, what to say, what to hear, and what to do for themselves to be going to a different <coughs> level in their careers and their life? That's where we come in. That's what I feel. So when uh, Siddharth said, when somebody joins in in my company, I always stress on a buddy system. This person doesn't only help them learn the ways and the culture of the, and, uh, the company, but they're there to talk to. So that's where we actually uh, miss out. They are lonely, they are alone, and they are looking for a place, a sense of belongingness within the environment they are working in. That fulfillment of working and getting their friends, their buddies there, is what will actually help them in their mental health. Uh, buddy is not just, you know, who would say Ki how to make a dal makhani for them. Buddy is saying, where are you staying? Are you fine in your room? Have you had your lunch? Have you had your meal? Can we go and, uh, you know, have some chai somewhere outside? So there are different levels where we can take care of this loneliness of Zen Y and millennials. Another thing which I think we should really take care of is make them professionals. I think when I joined Obro Hotels, I was just a raw person. Most of us must be. How did we turn into a professional? By those attention and the care and the empathy, empathetic bosses who let us know as to how do we deal with ourselves, how do we deal with the environment, how do we deal with the tasks that we have. So that kind of leaders, business leaders. So now people management. I feel is not only the process, the policies, the business leaders need to learn. It is about mental health, it's about connecting with their people, creating the conducive environment. The best examples which I feel is the army set up, where the chief of army takes care of the line managers, the commanding officers. The commanding officers take care of their boys. That's how our system, especially hospital industry, it works. They are like army of chefs, army of people who are there to be at the front taking care of the customers. My line managers are the commanding officers. I have to teach my line managers how to deal with their mental health of their boys. And I have to take care of the mental health of my other commanding officers. So that's how it goes. I think the old school of system which we had in the army is a great example to take where mental health well-being is concerned as to how do we take care of our people. You know, second thing, which I'll, this is the last, I don't want to take much time. I was going through the Netflix and I went to this play, thing series called Blue Zone. Are we aware of that series? So it's a series where people go to those places where people are living cent centenarians, living around 100 years. So what are the factors which make them happy? What are the factors which is making them live till 100 years? That means there is something which is working. They have a purpose in life and they are healthy. And their community is one of them. Food is one of them. Purpose in Ikigai is one of them. Purpose in life and the direction to do and how is one of them. So I think these things have to be applied in the companies, in the organizations to get the mental well-being done. Lot of other things can be outsourced. We have financial people helping them how to you know, deal with their finance, we have insurance, we have other medic claims to take care of the basic things where they don't have to worry about their life. But rest, it's up to us. Great. I think I've made some sense. Yeah, yeah. Because so I don't see anybody else smiling here. It made a lot of sense. I think yeah, we can elaborate with it. So you mentioned uh, about EAP. Can you let us uh, know more about what is an EAP? I think we 
So EAP is about employee assistance programs. It is very uh, prevalent uh, in the Western uh, companies and organizations in the US and other places, Europe. But it's very, very, it's in a very nascent stage, very infant uh, stage in India, where you actually segregate the stress and the anxiety of employees. Is it financial? Is it something to do with personal, maybe substance abuse? or maybe you have depression or you have any other mental illness such as personal. Third can be the culture. Are you really getting connected? Are you being your true self at the workplace? Fourth is maybe the environment or maybe you know security of the family, insurance, money. So lot of things the organizations have decided. Just say up health you are actually getting affiliated to a gym, right? So the company is deciding, insurance, this, this, let me outsource the EAP. So the EAP person comes and helps this employee in planning his finance, planning on, on the advising on insurance for the family and also they don't have to worry as to how do I go about in my life. So that actually helps the mental wellness of employees who are there. Great. Any thoughts on your side? <laughs> so, uh, open door communication is very much important for all the employees because uh, sometimes they are not able to share with anyone, especially with their manager or their peers. They have a you know, fear to lose that communication or you know, uh, uh, maybe someone knows about that communication. So, we have uh, you know, introduced that open door communication with the HR. They can come any time with us and they discuss about that 30 hours during the lunch time or at the evening time. So I found when I started, you know, bonding with the employees, they started communicating to us. Even they just wanted to share not the professional fear, personal fear as well. So they just wanted to share about their life, what is going on in the family. So which comes stress out, right? So they don't, they even <coughs> said, I don't want to, you know, discuss with anyone on family wives so and we kar pata The kind of bonding uh, we have made uh, in, you know, an integral department that is, you know, um, uh, good um, as far as I think. So, and secondly, uh, we have also introduced a few wellness being, uh, you know, program for the employees. Uh, one of the most important factor, whenever we go with the medical insurance policies, we just go with the checkups only, right? After that, the reports will come. Nobody knows what to do after that. So, there is a, you know, um, I met with one person um, uh, with the Enviro chips. I'm not sure you have heard or not. So uh, they are uh, doing your, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, entire checkup within 15 minutes. You will get the report on your mobile. They will assign a particular doctors to you, 101, uh, till 90 days or 180 days, whatever you want to, you know, uh, take that uh, particular um, uh, format. And uh, they will make in short, Whatever you feel, uh, any kind of stress, anxiety, they can discuss with you and they will give you the positive thoughts about that. Along with that, they have also introduced, even in the Christmas, we are distributing the you know, that kind of chip because when you use laptop and uh, your mobiles, it impacts to your body, right? So, uh, fitment of going to the gym and other things, it is, I think, I found which is very, very good because uh, I use that chip as well when I, you know, hold my mobile entire day. So, my heart changes, 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 right? When I started using that uh, chips, so, uh, you know, I found that I can use a lot of mobile phones. So, we have given that to employees and now we are giving to dealers and vendors as well to make them, you know, our employee, dealer, vendor, uh, well-being at their places. Uh, there is a lot of things also what we are doing. Uh, uh, we are clearing the set communication because sometimes stress um, along with the personal and professional like both are matters, right? They are not going for the lunch on time because their bosses are very strict. They don't want them to go and don't want to, you know, stand up from the seat. They just wanted to show them, okay, yeah, he's better than right? So we have restricted, we just, uh, you know, switch up the light at one o'clock for half an hour lunch and make sure Sub-load lunch kind of times in Jayenge and they will come back and we will make sure as well they will go on the holidays uh, as per the CLPL, you know, um, 
as allotted as per the company policies. Because managers are very restricted, they don't want them to go for the holidays or the leaves, not allowed to go on a leaves. But why? This is their right. Especially in the you know automotive sector when I was there, I found agar manager better hai, to uske team bethi rani chahiye. Why? If you are working 9 to 5.30, then they are dedicated to that. After that, they have a right to go. Right? So, slowly and gradually, we communicated and aware to the leaders and the managers. So, you know, this is very, very important. So, stress and anxiety will come down. We introduced a short leave policy uh, in my previous company, in my current company as well. So, they found uh, very comfortable if they want to go for the PTM in the morning or any doctor at the evening. So, they can go and take a short leave concept. So, these, you know, a small, small steps will help to the employees to make sure, yes, we are secure here. We are threat-free environment, especially uh, for the women, as he said, maternity leave policy, people are going. They definitely know if I come back from the maternity, I will not get the, you know, promotion or we are not very secure. We make sure during the maternity also, we are sending the Christmas gift or the birthday gifts or the anniversary gifts. Make sure you know, they are aligned with the businesses, what is going on. One case is already going on, so this is the best example I can give. And um, uh, uh, now, you know, we are distributing the Christmas and the New Year gifts, so definitely, uh, you know, she will aware, she will get it. <laughs> and uh, also, we are doing a lot of activities like the posh awareness, because few of the companies, yes, they have a posh policy because it's a mandatory act, but somehow, a uh, female is still not that secure. Right, uh, especially in that type of uh, environment where the manufacturing firm or the large corporates. So this is our responsibility to show them yes, we have a threat-free environment. We have an open door policy. Any time you can come and discuss. So you know uh, these type of things we have to communicate to the employees. You have to make a good bonding. So AI will not replace the human touch. Never ever. This is all about. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, just to add on, uh, well said by all our panelists, uh, I have a slightly different approach on this. It is more about communicating and encouraging, talking about employees, allowing them to come out and speak about mental health, uh, mental health and uh, well-being, because. What we do, we have been doing since ages, right? Insurance some there and it's also medical and there and Is manager mindful while he is engaging with his employees? Is he respectful? Is he kind to himself? Are the expectations being set, these are realistic? Or is it something that uh, we are just chasing something which is building upon the stress of your employees? So my take over here is Building a culture of openness, we still need to do something more than what we are doing. This mental health and wellness cannot be a boardroom discussion. It has, it has to go onto the ground in a realistic sense. The first line manager, the HODs, are they doing enough? Are they recognizing even talking about it and not feeling well? Are they message chutti ki jo aati kya wo isli jati kyun le rahe ho? Are we giving a desire off to an employee when he actually needs? After COVID, look at the corporate world, the way it is changing. Layoffs are reality. Any uh, interpersonal issues with a colleague or a boss puts the stress on an employee stress away. That where am I getting to? Yes, yes. Can you take it up? Is in HR and organization providing those safety nets? This is what we will build onto the mental health, well-being, what we are talking about. And it is all about communicating and training those managers to be kind to themselves. It is all about allowing them to accept people. You are talking about Smita, about some surveys, right? Uh, I was also doing the same thing. And to my surprise, it was every second person into the corporate world is talking about mental Health and well-being, right? Right, has gained momentum. Yeah. Yes. If you talk about EAPs, we are talking about EAPs in this room, but 58% of employees said they don't know what EAP is. Yes. Are we doing enough? Yeah. So, it is a take that I have. 
we have to walk the talk, we have to train Absolutely. managers and that is how you will be able so to create that in the Completely world. resonating. Um, the first and the foremost thing is to identify and you know, define what actually is mental health and what are the issues. So if we have to empower our managers to actually look at the behavior patterns of the employees, you know, the team members. It is something to do with the training. How do you train your managers to identify these these symptoms of mental health and how to address them? Are we are we spreading this awareness and training programs to the managers? Yeah. So Kamal, uh, it is more about uh, bringing up this conversations that this is reality and it is there. We have to accept the way it is. We have to identify the symptoms, be it the person withdrawing from the team or maybe being aggressive into the uh, environment. Just giving these examples, this can be, maybe a performer someday has turned into a non-performer or maybe a new general in of organization has gone silent, yes. right? These are few symptoms which we should be mindful of. As HR, we do the skip thing, we do uh, anonymous check-ins. It is managers to do more of the check-ins. We do that, we are also doing an uh, initiative where we are doing a 360 which is their reality for a lot of organizations do. We are not the MNC so we are catching up late. But with this 360 it is clear communication to the managers that it is nothing to do with your image. It is more to do for your development. Great, you know? great thoughts. Thank you so much. I think we are running out of time. Yes. Uh, we need to close this by saying that let's create that environment where, it, where everybody is respected and allowed to thrive in the organization and we need to make all those efforts, make it very apparent that we have such and such program to help you out and let's create that environment at the workplace. Uh, so, you know, cultural fitment is definitely one of the most important aspects of Secondly, as uh, you mentioned, mentor or the buddy program is one of the best programs when you allot once the person will enter in the premises or first day of the joining if you allot a three months you know mentor to him who is very positive who can you know way, who can make them understand how to behave in the company or what is the culture of the company he can settle in the company very well and we can found those people who is working with us last 20 22 years three years so we can make them recognize as well because sometime who is going to be retired, they thought, yes, we are, you know, uh, we are nothing in here, maybe, you know, we just need to spend some time and go after 60 years. So, this is the best thing, if we can allot and make them recognize, because they are the best one, they are the asset of the company, who can, uh, you know, fit new employees and make them settle in the company. I think the lavish, I have read somewhere, the most lavish gift that you can give to someone is the complete attention to that person. I think that's what we need to do when you are interacting with each employee of yours. Yeah. So it is full attention, it's just not a general how are you. It's how are you, how are you feeling today, how is your family, that's very important. Let's be genuine and give them complete attention. That's much thank you. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your thoughts, panelists, and thanks audience for your time. Thank you. We will give them a big round of applause. Thank you all the panelists. Thank you so much, Kamal.